Hello, my name is Toby from Art Master Studio and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint 28mm World War II Africa Corps. Now these are a really interesting set of figures from Perry Miniatures. Um, these are plastic, uh, as you can probably tell, um, but they're actually really nice plastics. Usually I'm not um, a fond of plastics but um, these ones actually I think they've done quite a nice job on so as you can see I've uh, already base coated the figure uh, I decided to do this to uh, save time on the video so it's quicker to render and quicker to upload um, basically I think everyone who watches these videos has a rough idea about base coating and it's kind of the the boring bit of the video and we want to just get straight on to highlighting um, I'll tell you what colours I've used along the way so you don't need to worry about what colours I've base coated it with because I'll let you know that. So I'm going to start off uh, washing over the flesh and the uh, gas mask holder. Um, so I base coated the flesh in uh, Vallejo Panzerace's flesh base and I base coated the uh, gas mask holder in desert yellow and I'm going to wash over both of those with at Games Workshop Agrax Earth Shade so I'm using kind of a, a Nekadol brush here this is a old 2-0 Kalinsky Sable it's, you know I'm using an old brush because you know, it's a uh, it's a little bit rough, and I don't need to worry about you know pushing it around and getting it into creases and stuff like that. Uh, I don't want to use a brush that's too big. Obviously, we want to maintain control over the wash uh, itself. So we're putting it on fairly uh, fairly thick. We want it to fall into the creases like. Uh, the eye sockets and around the ears and stuff. Don't want it to flood the figure though. If we put, um, you know, if we put too much on, then it will just hide some of the detail and uh, it will fall into like other parts of the figure where we don't want it to go. Make sure you get around under the helmet at the back there. You can see some uh, some of the neck. Uh, it's easy to miss that or to assume that it's hair. Okay, so that's that done. So you may have seen a bunch of these in a studio update that I posted last week. Uh, so you can look at those for more inspiration. I'll be posting more pictures of the group finished on Facebook anyway. You know, I'll, I've got, I'm covering um, three different colours of cloth here. So if you've got questions about that, then I think we'll cover basically. I think we'll cover the overall look of the figure just on this one model um, that you can vary on the other models. So now I'm gonna wash over the gunmetal with known oil so I'd like to um, thank our patrons um, who are supporting us through the website Patreon um, Basically what we're doing is um, giving people the chance to support us by donating a little bit of money for each tutorial we post. Uh, it really helps out because we are extremely busy with commissions and you know the time it takes to film these. Um, it, you know it just it helps to get a bit of support and it shows that um, you know people really want to see this and they want to help us out and we really do appreciate it and we want to give something back in return so what we normally do is um, when we've filmed the tutorial we'll give away the miniature featured in the tutorial um, in a competition so the people that um, 
become patrons are in with a chance of winning that figure. Uh, in this particular situation though, this is a figure for a commission, I just could not resist not doing a tutorial. Um, you know, I had to had to get one for these Africa Corps because it's such such a nice figure and nice uniform. So I can't actually give this one away, but I will be giving away a different figure. Um, I'm not sure which yet, um, but you know, I'm sure it will be a lovely figure. Uh, so you know, if you're interested in that, there'll be links in the description below of how to become a patron. If not, then that's perfectly fine. We re we really appreciate all our viewers. Um, you know, and if you want to share and comment on the video, that's, you know, that's awesome. So, you know, just thanks for viewing, really. So, uh, let's get on to highlighting some of the cloth. Uh, I'm going to highlight the trousers. Um, so, these, this is going to be the same colour that I normally use for uh, World War II British uniforms, uh, which is, I start off with Vallejo Burnt Umber. Oh, just drop the paint. Uh, and then we highlight with um, English uniform. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to that. Let's see if we can get that in shot. So if you, as you can see, I've squeezed some out here, and uh, you know you can see when I'm doing this with my brush that. It's kind of sticking to the brush. It's almost like glue in a way. That's like the wrong sort of consistency. We, we that's a little bit too thick. So I'm just going to put a little dab of water in there, mix it all together, and then it should become nice and smooth, and it will not stick to the brush as much as it just was. So you can see that there. That's kind of a, a good example of when you know that it's watered down enough. Um, obviously you can put too much water in um, and then it will just flood everywhere and that's you know that's not what we want. We don't want it to be too thin. So when I undercoat the figure I used uh, a Kalinsky Sable 2.0 and for highlighting I'm switching to a Kalinsky Sable 3.0 this is actually quite a small thin brush. Uh, other brands, you know, <clears throat> other brands vary in the size of their zeros. Like a uh, basically a a two uh, three zero Kalinsky uh, could be the equivalent of a uh, five zero from Jarvis because you know Jarvis brushes go to ten zero, which is like minuscule. Um, not not sure if Kalinsky does 10-0, but uh, obviously, as you can see, this is thin enough as it is, and it's only a 3-0. So. so what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, putting the paint on, uh, leaving creases in a sort of a natural manner, um, kind of where the trousers flare out to the side. We're going to going to bring from the from the edge inwards in a sort of a diagonal fashion going towards the knee and then the same for the inside we'll go from the top down in a diagonal towards the knee uh, and that kind of shows uh, where the tension on the cloth is and where it's being pulled from don't need to put a ton of creases uh, it is personal preference but you know whatever you think looks good okay so that's that done Now I'm going to highlight the jacket. So for this, I undercoated it in English uniform, the same colour we just used to highlight the trousers for the first time. Just going to 
scratch this little bit up here. There we go. So yeah, so we used English uniform for the undercoat, and we're gonna do the first highlight in German camo orange ochre. This is a really nice sort of orangey ochre, really. Uh, it's kind of a you got green ochre, which is more yellowy, uh, rather than more greeny, I guess. But this is a, sort of a really nice colour, a nice warm ochre. Because um, obviously being in the intense sunlight, uh, the uniforms would have faded and changed over time. They would have probably originated in a kind of a greeny drab colour. Uh, the sun would have tanned them. They were issued um, tan uniforms as well, um, but kind of they all wore a mismatch of colours and new recruits would often dye their hats just so they didn't stand out, so I think that's really interesting. And it makes for a really nice sort of warm deserty look to these uh, uniforms. So let me know in the comments below if you've had any experience with these figures and uh, what your opinions of them are. I've actually um, been painting some of the metal ones that Perry do as well, like uh, vehicle crew and stuff. And if I'm honest, I think they're a little bit disappointing. You can probably hear my dogs in the background, just have to ignore those. Uh, play fighting, as always. But, um, yeah, so these, the metal perries, I think they're a little bit disappointing because the detail on them just isn't quite as nice as the plastics. Um, obviously, the plastics are very refined and uh, the process of moulding them is different. But, um, you know, normally I prefer the metal version of any figure to the plastic version, but in this case, the plastic version is just kind of superior. The uh, me metal ones, they seem a little bit rushed. You know, some of the detail on them is just a bit all over the place and just, you know, not as nicely uh, formed. Whereas everything is kind of very clean and clear on these plastics, and generally the the plastic detail does show out. Um, sometimes with plastics, I find some of the detail is a little bit too subtle. Um, but the Perrys have done a really nice job on these. So on the front of the jacket here, kind of, if you can, pick out the pockets and the pocket flaps, um, kind of make those stand out a bit more. You can always do that with the second highlight as well, if you uh, accidentally merge them together a bit. There's a fourth colour that we're not using today that I have used on the other ones I've done. Um, that starts with a US Field Drab base coat 
and then I add Vallejo Light Mud to lighten it twice um, for each highlight. And uh, there is a colour from Vallejo called, uh, I think, Highlight Africa Core, or it's got Africa Core in the title, and that's a very similar colour to Light Mud anyway. And light mud is kind of uh, creamy, sort of browny, sort of undercoat that I normally use for white, uh, like this here. So you can see how faded the uniforms could have got in the sun. So it's really, you know, up to you of how much variety you want to put in these. I think that four colours is generally enough because the ones I've done there's a lot they look very varied and I've only used four four different colors uh, you can use more if you like um, but you know for me I think four is enough and you know because you can change it so you've got um, you know several different colours on one figure so you can have different like we've got here different colour trousers different jacket and different helmet um, or you could have them all the same it's up to you um, for the helmet actually I undercoated with beige brown and we're gonna lighten that with desert yellow Here's Desi, you know. Let's see if we can get this on camera here. You can use a knackered out brush to mix these together. A little bit of water with it. Especially on the helmet, you want to make sure you've got lovely smooth consistency. And with this colour that we're mixing, we kind of want to get halfway between beige brown and desert yellow. Um, you know, because desert yeah, we're going to use desert yellow on its own for the second highlight. So having this colour sort of right bang in the middle of those two colours is going to be the perfect um, contrast that has a kind of a nice smooth transition. So with the helmet, I'm just going to highlight on the top and then put a, put a line all around the bottom because where the helmet flares out around the edges, uh, there's going to be a little bit of shadow. So that's what we're going to leave the uh, undercoat, the base colour, to portray that shadow. Now we're going to go back and we're going to highlight the bag and I'm going to use Burnt Umber. I undercoated the bag with Germ Camo Black Brown. So this is a, a nice triad on its own. So you've got German Camo Black Brown highlighted with Burnt Umber and then we're going to highlight that again with uh, Splinter Blotches number two. Uh, not not much to this particular part here, it's quite small but the detail is important all the same I'm going to highlight the wood uh, for the wood I undercoated with dark rust and we're going to highlight with uh, leather belt This uh, applies for the handle of the shovel here. And the uh, water bottle. And 
the gun itself. Hopefully by this time the washes that we applied at the start of the video would have dried so we can start highlighting the flesh and it also means that when we're highlighting the wood on the gun none of the black wash is going to get in the way so I'm going to highlight the flesh now using Vallejo flesh base this is a Panzer Aces colour this is the colour that we base coated it in before we washed it. Make sure you pick those fingers out. The uh, second highlight is going to be where the details really start to pop on the flesh. As with uh, most uh, areas that we highlight. So we're really going over all of the face, leaving the creases uh, in the undercoat colour. Pick out the cheekbones if you like. I think we're gonna we'll give this guy some stubble when he's finished as well. Remember to get round under that back of the neck again. All right. So I'm going to highlight the um, boots and the leather bits now with uh, flat brown. We undercoated this in germ camo black brown. So a little tiny strap here on there and then the actual strap for it that goes around the body. And then around the front as well. The gun strap will be this colour. And then the little pouches at the front are going to be this colour as well. Um, I have seen them black and I have seen them brown. Um, probably just a very dark brown is, uh, is fine for this. 
the rest of the straps will be a khaki colour. And I chose khaki because I knew that that would stand out from a lot of the tan colours that we've been using for the uh, uniform. And then the boots are also this colour and they've got this really interesting uh, sort of gaiters that go over them. And at the back there's like a, a thin line of the boot colour that you can see. It's really unusual, I think it's a really nice touch to this uniform. Okay, now I'm going to highlight the gators themselves, uh, undercoated them in German tank crew black, Panzer Aces, and we're going to highlight them in German field grey, World War II. So, I have seen um, these can be a tan colour as well, I guess they would have faded just like the uniform, um, but I kind of... I like them to stand out and in uh, some of the artwork that I've seen in um, books they do have kind of a, a, a darker greeny look to them so I think that you know this is a it's a you know it's accurate enough the color and it does um, make them stand out a bit more to the uniform <coughs> So there are laces around the front that are black that I'm just going to, I've left black f for now, we'll highlight those later on. You can hear both my dogs now slamming themselves into the door. They are a couple of crazy little mutts and they're always fighting so I do apologize for the uh, constant noise in the background I was just hoping that they'd go to sleep while I did this but obviously not they've got a, a Shih Tzu and a Pug -a -pom, and which is a Pug Cross Pomeranian and they're running around like lunatics right now uh, okay, so that'll do for this part. Um, there'll be a transition now, and then we'll move on to the next part. And we're back, and I have actually captured one of my doggies, and they're now sitting on my lap. So hopefully that will calm them down and they can stop fighting. Uh, so now on to the second highlights. Um, so we're going to highlight the trousers. Uh, and we're going to go for Vallejo khaki grey on that. So it was burnt umber, then English uniform, and then khaki grey. I just uh, think myself lucky that I haven't got children yet. Uh, so if I had, I imagine that I would not be able to do anything like this. Uh, unless uh, they were out of the house. So, right, here we go. We're highlighting the uh, trousers now. So what we're doing is basically putting it on, um, putting less on this time than we did last time, and we kind of just want to pick out where all the, the light's going to be hitting most at the tops of the creases uh, rather than the bottom of the creases so um, 
if you can imagine it going from the lightest color to the medium color to the darkest color and then back to the lightest color if you was going top down on the model that's the way I tend to highlight these um, hope that makes sense it's kind of hard to describe but I'm sure you can imagine it okay so that's that now I'm going to highlight the jacket with a uh, highlight British tank crew so we started with English uniform then germ camo orange ochre and then highlight British tank crew I suppose you could use um, a standard buff triad um, I, for buff I use US field drab green ochre and then buff <coughs> excuse me um, but you know this is a, a nice triad that I like I think I prefer this to the, the normal sort of buff triad it's got a different tone to it So um, if you would like to commission anything like this, you can send us an email at artmasterstudio at hotmail.co.uk. Uh, if you haven't already, I encourage you to look us up on Facebook. Um, at the moment, that's where we're most active and I post uh, most photos. Uh, and uh, tips and tricks and stuff so just look us go on to sign up to Facebook or log in to Facebook if you've already got an account and just search for Art Master Studio and you shall find us uh, I'll probably also put a link in the description below that's also a good way if you want to share some of your artwork uh, some of your miniatures you've been painting you can message me on there and uh, send me your pictures I always like to see what other people are up to and uh, you know sometimes people ask me for feedback on what they're painting you know, I'm always happy to do that Right, so now we're going to highlight the helmet. Uh, so we, before we had uh, beige brown as the base coat, um, followed by adding desert yellow. So it's kind of a mix, like halfway mix between beige brown and desert yellow. And now we're going to highlight with straight desert yellow. Uh, we also used desert yellow on the uh, gas mask canister, um, and we washed over that with Agrax Earth Shade. So now we're going to highlight that again with plain desert yellow.
So with this we're kind of just going where where the detail is on the the uh, canister. So with the stripes going horizontally, it's going to kind of do a couple of horizontal lines. And where the ridges go vertically will follow those as well. I'm going to highlight the bread bag uh, with splinter blotches number two. I think this would make a nice triad for horse flesh actually. That was a German camo black brown, burnt umber and then splinter blotches number two. So I'm going to highlight the straps now with khaki. Uh, so the base coat on that was actually dark mud. A really nice uh, triad is dark mud, khaki and then light mud but we're just going to use a single highlight of khaki this time. Alright, now we're going to highlight the black areas. There's not a lot of black on this model, uh, so we're just going to give it a single highlight with black grey. So there's a little tiny, tiny knife scabbard around the back. And then the laces on the gaiters at the front. sort of roughly go over those. If we was doing a, a much higher standard we could probably pick those individual laces out but you know uh, for what it is um, just doing that's fine I think. So now the flesh needs another highlight I'm going to use flesh, uh, flat flesh for these. So we used flesh base and then we washed it with Agrax Earth Shade and then we highlighted it in flesh base and now we're highlighting it a second time in flat flesh So for this part, we're really only picking out a couple of bits, so the cheekbones, around the ears, a little bit on the neck. You can do the chin if you like, but we're going to give that some stubble anyway. Try and pick out those fingers. 
make them stand out. It's important to get the fingers to stand out, I think. Uh, you know, if you're not careful, you'll just look like you've got a couple of blobs for hands. And nobody likes to have blobs for hands, so that's quite important. Right, so what's left? There's a little bit of silver buttons to do, um, some white on the eyes, uh, the lip, we'll do the lip first. The lip, we're going to use Foundry Deep Maroon. This is the only thing I use Deep Maroon for, apart from Napoleonic British sashes. But, you know, this is the one colour that I always do the lips with. And it just adds some nice character and makes them seem more human. So I think that's a really nice detail that you should all try and do on your models. Um, it makes, it sort of brings the face from one level to another. And I think that's, you know, a really quick and easy way to do that. So, you know, I highly recommend trying to do that. Uh, so, just going to pop a couple of buttons on with silver. This is gunmetal. This is what I use to undercoat the metal on the gun and the water bottle. Um, the buttons, there's one on each um, pocket flap. You can just see one there. Probably, I don't know, can you see the other one? There's one there, one there, one there. If you can see the belt buckle. And then on the back, if you can see any uh, sort of clips or buckles on the back there. I think that will do. So now I'm going to take some foundation white. You can use off white or ivory. It's up to you. But you know this is a kind of a pure white, really. Can't really get any lighter than this. So for this, uh, his little armband here. Just going to do some dots on it. Not going to try and write anything on there. Um, you can do it. I think they they have a, a thin line above and below, but we're just not going to worry about that. Uh, you know, it's a little bit too much to try and do that. Um, unless, of course, you've just got all the time in the world. But I think it'll take a lot of correction at this stage. So yeah, the shoulder straps, a little bit of white on either side of those, uh, a couple of white lines on the collar. You could undercoat these with brown or black to make them stand out a bit more, but um, I think they look fine as they are. I think they, because you know, because it's foundation white, they they still stand out quite a bit. Uh, then we want to try and pop some eyes in. So we might have to do a little bit of correction here, I'm not sure. It's, uh, as I say always, it's much harder doing it from behind a camera. Sometimes people like to do the eyes first, sometimes I like to do that. But today I'm doing it last. Yeah, I think they look okay. As long as they're not scrambled at a uh, fried egg eyes or uh, you know bleeding over the flesh too much, I think that's fine. Uh, so we're giving them a little bit of stubble now. So I'm gonna 
get our black wash. This is non oil. Give it a little mix, a little shake, shaky shake. Uh, then we're going to get our naked brush here. It's not totally naked, but it's just not good for anything other than washing, really. So, or maybe maybe undercoating. Not going to put way loads on. We just want enough to give some colour on the face. Got a little bit on the helmet there. So you can do it really thin and then just keep going over it with a couple of layers or you can just do one layer, it's up to you. But it, it will dry slightly differently to when you put it on. Um, you'll see what that looks like in a minute. It usually dries a bit darker than what you think it will. So I'm just going to add a little bit of extra character by having some black paint. Uh, and we're going to do a couple of chips on the helmet uh, where you see know, some wear and tear over time. So we'll do a little bit at the front here, a little bit on the side. Maybe, maybe he's been shot in the helmet on this side. So we'll do like a splodge there and a couple of little bits either side like that. You know, some little tiny dots around it, like he's like he's been chucking his helmet around, or he's had a couple of ricochets bounce off the side, and all the paint's chipping off. You can do the same for the uh, the canister at the back here. It really like adds to the campaign sort of look. And uh, you know, I think it really adds some character to the models. You don't have to do it on every helmet. You know, every helmet is probably a bit too much. But if you take the time to do it on a couple here and there, I think it makes quite a nice, uh, quite a nice difference. Draws the eye and gives some character. So now we've done that, I'm just going to take my lightest silver, which is aluminium. It's a model air color. going to put that on leaving some of the black around the edge of it I might just paint over his lip again just to make that stand out a little bit more and there we go and there we have the finished model So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learnt something from it. If you've got any questions please comment below and share this video with your friends. Uh, if you would like to support us there's a link to our Patreon page below um, where you can pledge any amount you like uh, and it will be per video that I make. Uh, I'm not going to be making tons of videos, maybe one a month if I can. Um, you know, every little helps but you know, if not, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the comments and all the feedback. Uh, I'll quickly show you what comes with the Perry box. Um, this is a sheet with uh, basically a whole um, platoon. Got your command section and 
uh, your other sections with your privates. Uh, so it kind of gives you a nice look at the variation of colours that you're going to get. Uh, and as you can see, the uh, belt pouches at the front, they do look black on here, but as I said, I think a very dark brown is, is nice. Um, and you can see some of the uh, gaiters on this one in particular uh, is more of a sandy colour, but you know, I, I kind of like the German field grey to stand out a bit more from the actual uniform. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and leave your comments below and I'll see you on the next one.